Anna Marie Albavetti is in Des Moines. And Anna, why are you here? Well, uh, it's not part of my career to open beauty salons as a group. <laughs> but um, last year when I was here doing West Side, I became very friendly with Tony Francois, whose beauty salon's opening is today. And um, he called me about a couple of months ago and he said, would you come out for the opening? And I said, yes, and here I am. Do you usually do this uh, sort of thing Never. for your friends? Or do, do well, they... only only for friends, yes, mm -hmm. ever, ever, ever now and then. But I don't know many friends who have opened beauty salons. <laughs> And so you are here now. Does, um, does this pattern of uh, being in and out, which is part with show business and going on and also this, does this make any difference in your uh, family life because you do have a daughter? Yes, I have a 15-month-old baby and I have a husband mm -hmm. who is older than 15 months, of course. <laughs> uh, well, it is hard at times because I take off sometimes for more than two, three weeks at a time. Up to a couple of weeks at a time, the departures, they, they're, it's not so bad. As a matter of fact, sometimes it's good for a marriage, I feel, to be separated for a small period of time and then go back. But uh, this last summer was my toughest test because I was away on the road for 14 weeks. Mm -hmm. And my husband, I saw, I saw him about ooh, two weeks out of that whole time, and that was rough. Uh, but like anything else, uh, you can't get have your cake and eat it too, you know. So sometimes there are drawbacks, and at other times, uh, like now when I'm going back, I'm taking two and a half months off, mm -hmm. and my husband will will be off for six weeks at the same time because he just finished shooting uh, I Dream of Jeannie for the whole season. So mm -hmm. how many other people can take, let's say, eight weeks off together? You know, it's so we have the good and bad. Well, there is always, I think, the implication that as far as uh, people uh, in the work in, uh, that uh, you're in, in the theater and in the uh, show uh, business of any kind, that they do have the tremendous traveling. And it's almost assumed that nobody else in the world is involved with traveling. And yet we have many business people That's and right. people that have to That's be right. away for of a long course, period of time. Of course. And so is it terribly different uh, from some of the other business people in the sense when you do have to be away? No, I don't think so. Being being away is being away. If you're uh, doing a concert or or you have a meeting in Mi Miami or in Paris for one week, it's really the same difference. You're still separating. You still have to get on the plane. You still have the burden to pack and unpack and and all of that. Now, has uh, the difference of a child made a uh, tremendous difference in the traveling that would not be just part of you and, and your husband? Well, yes, it has made a difference to the extent that I'm slowing down. Mm -hmm. By that, I mean I'm cutting my work absolutely in half. And uh, this summer, if I do take a show out, which I probably will uh, take um, the uh, show, the um, Fantastics, I will take the baby with me for at mm -hmm. least mm -hmm. half, of the, half of the tour. I don't want to be one of those mothers that, uh, when, they, when the baby's 20, 21, I <laughs> introduce myself as her mother. You know, I took a long time before I got married. I, to me, marriage was a very serious step. Having a child is even a more serious of a step, and I don't intend to uh, took it light, to take it lightly. Going on to your professional life now, what uh, show do you think is the one that you have had the most fun in up to this point? Well, the most meaningful uh, has been Carnival, of course, which mm -hmm. I starred in. in Broadway and which I won the Tony Award for which as, as you know it's like winning the Oscar uh, it was fun but at the same time it was a highly it ended in a very uh, highly tense dramatic scene so which, in which I was crying and sobbing eight times a week so I wouldn't call that fun <laughs> <laughs> but it was a great joy to be involved in it because it was great and it was my first venture and it turned out to be such a big hit and of course you know I was very happy about it mm -hmm. Now, you're working on, uh, and you will be this summer, and fantastic. Yes. And how much of the country do you tour with this? I think we'll do either 12 or 14 weeks, but I will have one week here and there off in between. Mm -hmm. Now, what part of the country do you go? Probably uh, in the eastern coast. Mm -hmm. Now, is there, uh, is there a great difference from one uh, geographic area to another, as far as the audience is concerned and as far as presentations? 
No, I think an audience is an audience. I don't care where you, where you put them, if it's in Alaska or, mm -hmm. you know, wherever. Uh, audiences in, in the same room and in the same time, different from night to night, from show to show. Mm -hmm. Anna, uh, what is the difference in the ty different types of performances, um, nightclub, uh, theater, television, all the different types? Well, of course, they're all different, because they all have their challenges. Uh, but out of all of them, I think I like Broadway stage kind of show, a book mm -hmm. show, I guess you would call it, better than anything. Why? Well, first of all, television is good, but as far as keeping your tools sharpened, you know what I mean mm -hmm. by that? You know, by timing and things. In television, you really can't get that because even though you do have a live audience, you, you're not really that, you don't, perform that directly to the audience. Mm -hmm. Therefore, the reactions are delayed or you don't even hear them. Nightclubs, I do quite a bit of, and it's probably the medium that I like least of all. I enjoy doing them, but primarily the people that go to a nightclub go, don't really particularly go there to hear you. It's a combination. They go mm -hmm. primarily to drink, eat, and dance, and then hear you. So there is a lack of respect for the artist that's opposed to a theater where you get a ticket to go and see that person or that show. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so it's this, uh, in a sense, communication with your audience and you're right. not getting the feedback right, right directly uh, uh, or uh, in that particular context. Exactly. Now, uh, do you feel that, um, that as you change and mature, do yes. you think that there will be any difference uh, in this same analysis 10 years from now? I doubt it because I felt this way about it for a long time mm -hmm. and I think I have grown up a lot. So. <laughs> but um, the, the basic things that will still be there, mm -hmm. I think, you know. Mm -hmm. But I was just wondering if you could foresee, though, uh, yourself to the point of uh, not uh, wanting or uh, not necessarily depending on that immediate audience. Um, it's not a question of depending. It's a question that a, a performer needs that to know. It's like taking a pulse of a person. Mm -hmm. You can't take it just by looking at them. You really have to feel them. Mm -hmm. And this is what, what you get with a live audience. Now, you're going on. Uh, do you have any uh, major plans? As you say, yes, you like the, uh, you like the Broadway theater mm -hmm. time. Now, is this where you want to uh, concentrate? No, I can't, as a matter of fact, concentrate there now because my husband is producer-director of a show called I Dream of Jeannie, mm -hmm. and its base is in Los Angeles, which means if I take a, sh a Broadway show, I must sign for a minimum of uh, one year, and that would mean seeing my husband on weekends. And I don't think that will work out very well. <laughs> At least I'm not going to gamble it. Uh, so maybe in a year or so, uh, his picture will change, at which time I would consider uh, taking a Broadway show. Mm -hmm. But right now, I do a lot of television. I do. Uh, What's coming up in that area? Well, I'm doing uh, uh, like the Dean Martin show at Sullivan, you know, all mm -hmm. Joy Bishop, all of those things. And now I'm taking off for two and a half months of complete rest and play with the baby. Mm -hmm. Then I'm going to go to Australia for three weeks. What are you doing in Australia? Nightclubs, uh -huh. Sydney. And then I'm going to Boston for two weeks. And then this summer, I will probably take as I said earlier, the show, The uh, Fantastics, with Howard Keel. Mm -hmm. Well, when I asked about the television, I was wondering if you were, uh, if you had plans for any more uh, large specials in no. the near future. No, the last one I did uh, was Kismet, which was given a couple of months ago, mm -hmm. and uh, to my knowledge, I don't. You know, of course, I never know from day to day what, what comes up. Mm -hmm. Well, we appreciate you being here. Thank you. And uh, coming to Des Moines, and Thank you very much. Thank this you. This has been Anna Marie Alberghetti visiting in Des Moines with doing a favor for an old friend.
Have you ever noticed how much difference proper decoration has on the effectiveness of a restaurant or club to lend atmosphere and charm? It has the same effect on your home when you wish a special and gala atmosphere for a party or holiday. The center of interest is generally your table. And when yours is set, possibly for a birthday party, it may look just right. But with a surprisingly small amount of work, look how it can change. The author of this charming transition is a petite designer, Connie of Alcoa, who proves each day that such beautiful decorations are child's play. Besides, they are fun. All you need is foil, a pair of scissors, candles, gift wrap and construction paper, a couple of oranges and a cherry. Let me show you. First of all, take the foil out of the box and drop the foil. Then slightly crunch it. Just go round so it gets a nice round shape and pretty much even. There we go. Now take your candle and your scissors and you punch a hole into the foil. There's number one. Let me show you another candle how easily it is done. A little larger. There we go. You see, this way, you don't have to eat the wax on your birthday cake. And besides, after the cake is eaten, you have still a memory of a birthday by having the wreath with the candles. Now, for the clowns, all you need is a tube of construction paper. Then you take the orange cherry right in the middle of it. And there is our clown. Here's the hat. If you want to be real, real fancy, then accordion pleat, construction paper, and tape it this way. You see? It is so easy, and it makes such a beautiful picture, as you can see right here. Once in a while, a very special occasion comes up. Maybe you want to announce an engagement, or there is an anniversary. So you set your table with the nicest cloth you have, the best china, your silver. The table looks nice, but something is missing. And this is how the table ought to look, with a special touch made by you. You will enjoy making this flower tree centerpiece because all you need is a paper cup, a candle again, styrofoam ball, or if you don't have it, use an orange. Foil again, a couple of flowers, a little bit of ribbon, and we can go ahead. We cover the cup. Make it nice and smooth. And the candle, and the orange. Once you have everything covered, you take a little bit more foil. and crush it around the candle to sit nicely in the paper cup. Let's use a little bit more and stuff it just a little. There we go, you see? Now we set in the candle. There we go. I use the styrofoam ball because I like to keep my flower tree for a long time. If you use the orange, I think it will only take, oh, a week till you have to throw it out. Now, I use my scissor to punch holes into the styrofoam ball and you see I took my artificial flower and just push it into the foam and another one now if you're lucky enough and you have a garden use real flowers looks beautiful now let's get a real large hole on one side, because we want to 
push it onto the candle. And a little grass. I know it will look better in your home because you have more time. But once you have it all covered and you put the artificial grass in there, you take ribbon and just bind one tree to the other, to the other, to the other. Now you know how this is made. Look at the whole picture again and see how really beautiful it is. May I show you now a centerpiece you can use all year long. In fact, it is one of my favorites. See how it adds to this table. These little figures are so easily made. All you need are two cones and a plastic ball, a little holly berry, and that's it. You see, I just put it on number one cone, and then I take the other one, but to make this little flower girl, I cut out petals, like this. And here's our flower girl, and to make her real, real special, we give her a bouquet of flowers. Just pin it on. Isn't she cute? I enjoy to make her. Now, you might have met Arturo. He is really our Christmas man. He is made out of red construction paper, sometimes with a little foil, and we also have the holly berry and a long, long cotton beard. Children make them beautifully. And for a graduation party, this is how you make it. Just a larger cone and black construction paper. You see, this fits over a glass or a tumbler. They are fun to make. In fact, I bet, mm, oh, half of my life that you can do it, and real well, too. Now, all those decorations you could do right now. If you want to know more of uh, how to use foil and uh, make centerpieces, just go to your nearest bookstore and ask for Akua's book of decorations. It's published by Golden Press. It is a nice book to read and to look at. The pictures are good. And you ought to like it because it was especially designed for you. It is genuinely amazing how much a small amount of special, easy-to-do decorations can brighten your home for a holiday or special party. Decorations for your table are especially important. Connie Von Hagen, designer for Aluminum Company of America, has developed some beautiful centerpieces that should help distinguish many special occasions. And the ease with which they can be done is their most noteworthy characteristic. Here is Connie to show you. I have never yet met a woman that could make a beautiful centerpiece by using a simple design. Look at this table. It is nicely set with china, your best silver, a beautiful tablecloth, and still, no personality. But, with a floral centerpiece made out of foil, a good design, easy to do, look what you have now. The centerpiece, you know, is made by hundreds of these little flowers. That's all, only flowers. Oh, a little ribbon, too. I show you how this is done. Take a circle of foil, like this, and now cut into the very center. There you go, like this. Now, put it on the table and smooth it out, because you are going to make a cone, like this. See? Now, what's too much, either you cut off or you leave it on. I cut it off because it somehow looks neater. Now, you turn it around and start cutting, and just Snip away. There we go. There. You see that? You can make it any size. Small circle, large circle. And this will make different types of flowers. Now, if you want to, cut off a little bit here because you take a pipe cleaner, make sort of a knot, this will be the center of the flower. Push it through. And here we have a flower. Now, then slide your fingers over it. And the flower starts to live. 
Isn't this nice? Easy? You try it. One circle, your scissors, and you have a flower. Now, if you want to, you could, instead of using the pipe cleaner, take a flower, I'll show you, and just pin it on a wreath of Acura wrap. And that's all there is to it. I told you it's easy. Take one plant, a pretty one with many leaves, and make around 25 butterflies, like this one here. And there you have another centerpiece. Let me show you how it's done. You need foil and you need gift wrap. Perhaps you could use construction paper. Make a double fold and cut out this shape out of gift wrap and another shape out of foil. Put a little bit glue right here and the other shape in brilliant colors. Use yellow and red and a deep blue on top. And there's your butterfly. Now, for the butterfly to stick wherever you want to put it, this is what you do. Take some adhesive tape, like this, and make a ring. Like this one. You see? Now, take your butterfly, put it on there, and now you can put it on your plant, you can put it on a pretty dish, you can put it on your wrist, on your tablecloth, to make a very beautiful picture. We have made centerpieces by crushing foil, by folding foil. Now I would like to show you how one can be made by covering with foil. Just picture your table. It's all set. The pie is baked and the coffee is made, but you need a little bit magic to get it the way you really want it to look. To make this tree, we need one pretty branch. I'd say try to find one that's a little nicer looking than this one. A flower pot, foil, then either cherries or flowers or a bow. Now, let me show you how this is done. Take your foil and just wrap it around your branch. Try to get as close to it as possible so that you have a nice shape. Like this. You keep on doing this all over. Now, if it looks just a little bit too bare, just form a branch by crushing the foil and just putting it around one of the branches to make it lifelike. Just move it like this. See? Then, when you're all done, put it in your pot, not quite straight. Have a nice angle and then if you have dirt or um, salt or um, oh something, you know, that will press it down and hold your pot so that it won't skip. This is all you need besides a bowl. You see? That's easy. That's fun. And if you like to have more fun, here is the answer. Go, to, go, no, run to your nearest bookstore and look for Akua's book of decorations. It's published by Golden Press. It's fun. It's for you.